han levantado. Oh, bella ciao, bella ciao, bella ciao, 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 esta mañana me he levantado y he descubierto al invasor. Tembas Thomas Evan Hajar, Burnham The New International, Jaraki Din, Le Pesh Perewene. Ero am dies hatten Academy a YPG International, um Jana Shoreshkari International be shopping. Hello viewers, you're watching The New International and today we've come once again to the YPG Academy where we're going to follow the life of another internationalist revolutionary. Wow, so you were here now for four years? Yeah, around about four years, yeah. And when you came here, you thought you would stay for such a long time? I never thought really about to go back to Germany, but I mean, every human is different. So, but for me, it was a, the right decision. Because of course it can happen that people come here and they find it difficult to find their place and they stay maybe six months and then they say it's enough and they go home. But you were able to find a role to play. Yeah, absolutely. I've seen friends here who have friends. They stayed here for two months or one month and then they said, oh my goodness, the weather is not mine. I don't understand the language. The food is not good for me. So they, I think they were not strong enough to stay here for a longer time and they left after one, two months. But I mean, these are conditions you can live with. Yeah, we are all humans. This is not, um, it is not impossible to live under this condition. This is an other world. This is a nice world. But you have to accept it. You have to mm, learn it about you. For me, it was no problem, yeah. But how I said, every human is different. Yeah. And now you feel like you're somehow inside Kurdish society? Yeah, yeah after four years, you know. Um, I, for, uh, I feel more than a Kurd as a German, I think. So <laughs> in my first time I was here, I mean, the first long time I was, I was in Kobani, one and a half year, and I visited a lot of families, a lot of civilians. I really was inside this, this how you say, the Gundi style, yeah, the really, the really, the really cool Rojava life, sit in the, on the ground with the Kurdish families and join the food, join the small talk, join the talking about Rojava, about Germany, about this. And yeah, after four years, I'm, I'm really comfortable with Kurds. Yeah, I try to have the company of Kurdish people, of Arabic people, of the Yazidis, of all the people. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. really fine. So maybe especially in this like earlier time, you know, you're going into a family, you're drinking a chai. What, what do they say to you? What do they ask you? What do they want to know? Yeah, Really, um, a lot of people don't understand why international come here. Yeah, they said, "Oh my goodness, I have two brothers in Germany. I have a sister in Sweden. I have an uncle in France. Why are you? Why are internationals come here for to help in a revolution? You are not a Kurd. You are not an Arab. You have nothing to do with this." And we try to explain, but we feel we feel we have a, we can do something. We can do something for a better world for for help Rojava to, to get free, to get our own part of this world. And we try to explain this, yeah, but a lot, but they were all thankful, yeah, that we come here, that, that we help, that we also join the families, that we try to be a part of the society, that we, that we eat with them, that we, yeah, try to be a part of, the, of, the, of this lifestyle. Yeah. So, for example, sometimes people like criticize like foreign volunteers in Rojava and they say, hey, this guy's from Germany, they just want to come like tourists, see some war and go home again. What would you say to these people? I've seen this. It's not, it's not wrong. Yeah. I mean, we have a lot of internationalists here, maybe a couple hundred and not everybody really want to be a part of the society. Some like, come like tourists, want to have some fun, want to have some adventures and then say after six months, I want to go back. 
and I understand if they criticize us and if they think maybe in general we are also, but we are all not so. I mean, a lot of us have a deep mind and um, think about what's in the future, yeah, how we can help for a longer time and want to be a part of this. So, but I understand this critic. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so in your time here, how have you tried to like think in a longer term perspective? Like what works have you been involved with? Like how do you see your long term role in Rojava? I mean, I get a, I get, I joined the YPG and I'm now a part of this. I mean, they will decide where I'm in a good position. I try to do my best. I try to help so far I can, so good I can. And I mean, the last three and a half years, I was in the health sector, for example. I make physiotherapy for injured uh, comrades, for um, people who get injured in the real world, like for the real fighters, yeah, for the real revolutionists. And I make the health sector three and a half years. And I thought this was a good work. Yeah, I, I saw in the, the processes how the people get from a wheelchair to walking. Um, and so last question, like, can you think of one example from these four years you've been here where you've kind of really felt close to the revolution, really felt close to the Kurdish people, like kind of an example of a time when it's really been effective for you? So the one point I was really close, I think the first time I've seen in the hospital in Kobani, I've seen the injured comrades, they are really hard injured and we had to help, yeah, we, we, we are part of this. We can save them's life, yeah, it was really an uh, emergency. And I think at this point, and this time, I, I don't can say this one point. I mean, it was a big process. Yeah, It takes maybe one year that I really feel inside the society. It was not this one point. Mm -hmm. But to eat every day with, with the people here, to live with the people here, to work with the people here. This for a military base like in general to have its own like tree garden what's the like kind of importance of this why make the effort i mean we we are here the academy and we think about what we can make new yeah not just uh, what they every time make what we could make better we also have a little garden in the back and we try to plant our own potatoes our own um, our own tomatoes, our own advocates, um, for to be a little independent, yeah, that we are not um, able to go to the city to buy from the logistic or to make it, that we make our own things, yeah. We also have um, trees for olives here. We have, we try to be so independent like possible with our own fruits, with our own vegetables. We have our own onions, and so I think this was the idea behind this. Yeah, it's an important project. And so I yeah, I wanted to ask now about your other work in, because although you were somehow connected in YPG this whole time, you were not with a gun in your hand. Yeah. What were you doing? I mean, I joined the YPG really, really fast. So I think in my second week or so, I was in Rojava. Um, I joined the YPG party, <clears throat> but they had a lot of possibilities how to help. <clears throat> they said you can help 
wherever you are able to help. If you are a good driver, we can make you a driver. If you want to be a soldier, you could be a soldier. If you want to be uh, a doctor or something, um, work in a hospital, you can make this. And I said, I have some experience in physiotherapy and they said, oh, that's wonderful. We have, uh, unfortunately, a lot of comrades who get injured, who get really heavy injured. And if you have just a little experience, then make this. And my first station, I think, was Kobani, the hospital. And there was a really, really good uh, doctor from Sweden, but with Kurdish background, who uh, trained me a little more in, in really war, um, war injuries and make me a really good um, physiotherapist. And I worked this work close to four years now, yeah. So what kind of, like here in Rojava, like we know, it's often very difficult to get like medical resources, like there's a shortage of trained people. How could you help these people? I mean, we help in first line with our with our morale, with our hands, and we, we do what we can. The work is not so really different like in Europe. Yeah, the, the movements are the same ones. But if we get a lot of donates from in general, I've seen a lot of things from from Germany, from Europe, from America. Machines we can use. Yeah, training machines for for lame people, for injured people. This this would help. Yeah, really. I think this work it's also must be very important, very difficult for the soldiers on a psychological level. Like these people they've gone, they've fought against ISIS and they've been shot and maybe they won't, you know, maybe they won't walk again or their whole life will be changed. Like how did you see the morale of the people and how could you help them in this way? Yeah, this is uh, this is amazing. I've seen 20 years old guys, uh, 19 years old girls uh, who get injured really hard and it shows that they never will walk again. Yeah. But uh, the, the mysterium is they don't get angry, they don't get uh, really sad. Maybe they get uh, in the evening, but I never see this. Yeah, They're every time laughing, they're every time singing, they make this. Because they sing, it doesn't matter if you sit in a wheelchair, if you go on crutches, if you don't can walk anymore, you can work, you can help. And I've seen a lot of projects here, how to make them fit for the future, Yeah, how to train them English, that they can maybe go in the diplomacy um, sector, or train them technical stuff, that they can play at the computer. I mean, nobody here will let uh, will let gun. Nobody here will let fallen. Mm -hmm. They they find the positions. They found the work. How they can help, and they are happy with this. Yeah, they think I'm a part of this whole of this whole movement of this revolution, and I can help. Doesn't matter. You can walk. You are blind. You you are top, but you can work. You can help. Actually, I don't know if you remember, but we were together in the Malaburinda, the wounded house, on the like anniversary of the revolution last year. And this for me was amazing to see this yeah, injured people and their morale was so high like for the revolution and for what they achieved. Yeah, thank you. And I feel happy if I if I just a little piece of of rice and morale, yeah, if I make some physiotherapy and it's just little steps, yeah, maybe after a couple of months they can move a finger or they can move the legs a little. But I think for the future that's amazing, yeah, because they, they believe they could get better they could be better and if i'm a little piece of this i'm happy with this you yes. know maybe you could explain a bit like how it's working this system of like malabirinda malagazi like what does this mean what are these places you know if you get really hard injured you you have an operation normally then you have a little rest time you have a little um, root time and then later normally you you go in the malabarinda there are a lot of comrades who are really hard injured who don't can walk anymore who are blind who are who have different really hard injuries and then later mostly they go in academies for make education whatever technical stuff computer stuff english and so on and then normally they found a position where they can work at a reception of an office or in a hospital or in an archive or make a bookstop or whatever i've seen really a lot of comrades also um, um, responsibilities of, of Malagasias who are sitting by themselves in a, in a wheelchair, in an electronical wheelchair, but it worked, yeah? Yes. And it's something that's really different, for example, I know in UK and America, maybe in Germany also, like many of the like homeless people are former soldiers and when people come out of the army there's like no support, but here the people really taking care of each other. Uh, I've also seen in Germany really depressive people because they have nobody who take care of them, no supporting, no. Yeah, that's really bad. Make me sad. Yeah, but yeah, yeah I never have seen this. Yeah, if you get injured, th this is no question. Yeah, of course you stay. You stay a part of the whole, and this is no fake. They are really, really generous to them. They are really kind of them because these are heroes. They get injured for the revolution for us. Yeah, they, they are 20. Maybe they never can walk again, and they make this for us for for whole Rojava, and they are the real heroes for yes. me. You know. Bella 
ciao, bella ciao, bella ciao, 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 esta mañana me he levantado y he descubierto al invasor. Oh partigiano, me voy contigo. Ciao, bella, ciao, bella, ciao, 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 partigiano, me voy contigo porque me siento aquí morir. Y si yo caigo en la guerrilla, oh, bella, ciao, bella, ciao, bella, ciao, 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 si yo caigo en la Fosa en la montaña, oh bella ciao, bella ciao, bella ciao, cava una fosa en la montaña a la sombra de una flor. Así la gente cuando la vea, oh bella ciao, bella ciao, bella ciao. So outside of your program here, you also have some time to relax, no? Yeah, for example, we have here this table tennis place, and this is a really good place to come down if you get a little angry or if you are, you need a relaxing place. We have one television room, we have here this table tennis room. We also try to make a little sport, forget fitter, forget more healthy, and yeah, it's not just war, it's not just fighting, it's not just, it's also to try, um, yeah, make some not war things like table tennis, for example. Yes. Yeah. You, so, we were just talking, you were making like a comparison between kind of your daily life in Germany and your daily life like when you were living in Kobani. Could you explain a bit, like, what's the difference between Germany and Kurdistan? Oh yeah, the culture, I mean, this one is uh, Europe, the other is Middle East, so there are a lot of, lot of difference. I had to learn, it was a big, big process. For example, here it's absolute normal that you get invited to food, that you that you get invited for drink a tea, yeah. In Germany, the most relationships you have at your work, and maybe at home, your really close family. But here, if you know family, so so it's absolutely normal that they invite you for the for food. Or also, the civilians are really kind, are really nice people, and they never would let you go without to drink a tea, for example. Or so and in Germany, they were more looking when you are leaving. Yeah, so we have no time, please. <laughs> but here, they, it's like they don't want to let you go. So, yes. but this is really nice. Yeah, like whenever you need like a lift somewhere or something to eat or a place to sleep and even if you don't need it the civilians are always like giving you a hand yeah yeah really you could sleep every day somewhere else yeah <laughs> so because if you know one village you know everybody yeah everybody is really close with each other and if they know or go around yeah oh yeah i know also know him and this is nice <laughs> Ciao, bella, ciao, 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 esta mañana me he levantado y he descubierto al invasor. Oh, partigiano, me voy contigo. Oh, bella, ciao, bella, ciao, bella, ciao, 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 partigiano, me voy contigo. Siento aquí morir Y si yo caigo en la guerrilla Oh, bella, ciao, bella, ciao, bella, ciao, ciao, ciao Si yo caigo en la guerrilla Te dejaré mi fusil Cava una 
una fosa en la montaña. Oh, bella ciao, bella ciao, bella ciao. Cava una fosa en la montaña a la sombra de una flor. Así la gente cuando la vea. So, Havel, uh, what is this place? What are you working on here? This here is like the education room. We make every kinds of education here. We make here genealogy, the rights of the woman. We make here ideology, like a little training about ideology training here. And I, in general, make here now the Kurdish education. You also can use this place as a language education room. And for the really, really new friends here who joined really new, who know nothing in Kurdish, I make sort of basic stuff, the really first sentence, the first greetings, the first, uh, the first stuff in Kurdish, so I manage the teaching here. So for example here, can you just, uh, maybe we can read the sentence, it says... Yeah, for example, this is a situation how you, um, how you make your first visit, so the absolutely basic um, sentence. For example, if you knock at the door and you are uh, you are a visitor, you can start with Biberin Musate Heye. Then probably the owner said something like Are Are Karemke, like yes, yes, come in. Then so yeah, the normal daily talk. Oh, those pasava, that's the sarbe. For example, here you are explaining these words like uh, Huda and Walla. What do these words mean? For example, a lot of internationals don't know a lot of words here. And we are here in uh, Rojava, a part of Syria, and Arabic is a big, big language. So you have, for example, Chode, that means God. It's God in, you s normally you say Allah, like um, Allah, God, but also Chode means God. And Chode, f how I explained it, yeah, you can mean it as a general, as a, as a functional general word for like you can translate it with man or oh my god or you, it c could be used anywhere yeah if you have a bad situation if you have a good situation if you are sad if you are good Chode, it's like oh god or, oh god or, you know it's so universal it's nice to teach in this way like kind of yeah very natural and like the language that you actually have to use in daily life like not in too formal way absolutely we had a teacher before an american who tried to teach and he um, needed the whole day with declinating one verb yeah put and now the the students know how to declinate put yeah which 20 different way to say put something but it don't work yeah so if you are for example the general situation you are a visitor in a house or in a, in a different place, you have to know how to ask for a cigarette, you have to know how to say thank you, you have to know how to say, yes, please, I want a tea or so, yeah, so the basic stuff and not, I'm also a fan that the people can understand you and you can explain what you want, yeah. The grammatic, yeah, it's secondary, also important, absolute, but I think the most, the first part has to be, you understand the people, the people understand you and then you can, uh, then you can find it, yeah, then you can perfect it, yeah, with the grammatic and so. And so, like, maybe a bit more generally, like, how do you see your role here now in the academy? Like, what are you trying to do here? Yeah, the, the time that I changed from the health sector to here is not so long ago, maybe two weeks now ago. And now I'm here, and in general, I make this basic Kurdish stuff. I had the responsibility commander here, Haval Zinnar, a little. We make also the garden project, and we, our job here in the academy is to show the new Haval, who are really new here, the first week, the first month, how the way is here, what no-goes you have here, what you have to do, what the, the Kurdish lifestyle, yeah, what you don't can do, what is absolutely forbidden, what is okay, and to make them fit for maybe go later to the Tabur or to go go to other jobs. This is the this is the job here of the how to say the veterans, yeah, you can say the people who are longer here, to make them fit to say, hey, yeah, of course in America and Europe that's normal, but here for example, absolutely no go here is to ask a woman where's the toilet. Yeah, this is so oh, absolutely no go here, and a lot of people don't understand this, and we explain them. This is a society thing here. It's a no go. So, and that's what we are doing here. So the people who are maybe one year, two years. Yeah. And when you came new here, did you have this kind of help? No, <laughs> no. It was a big, big learning process for me. I mean, every mistake you can make, I made. But I tried to make just one time, and then I learned, they said, no, this is an absolutely no-go, why you make it? And I tried to explain, because nobody said me how to live here. I had no Kurdish connections in Europe before, or Arabic. A lot of friends who come here know how to act with Kurds, with Middle East, with, with this whole part of the world, but I didn't know. So I have to learn, it was a long, painful process for me. 
But now, so you were just explaining, you of course you were here a long time, and not only did you get to understand society more, but you're also working on some personal project about your time here. Yeah. So it's, it's just a time, about three years, about how I decided to come here, what was my decision, what was my intent, why why I came here, and then the time I spent here. I mean, my first time in Kobani, how I how I see the life. What are the differences between the let's say the Western society and the, and the Middle East society? Yeah, what I what was new for me? What was absolutely uh, things I didn't know before? Yeah, or also funny things, happy things, but sad things. If, for example, I had comrades. Yeah, I make maybe one year physiotherapy. I make them fit. I, I get them well. Then they go back to the front, to Raqqa, for example, and after two days they get in the mine, they get in the traps, they died. I also try to explain these really sad uh, moments, and yeah, I wrote a book, yeah. And what do you want to achieve by writing this book? Like, what was your aim? It was, at the first time it was like a diary for me, like a, like a, like a book that I can, that can write my feelings, my, my movements um, about my yeah, experience I had here. And, Later, I give it to a couple friends of German friends who can understand my language, and they said, "Yeah, it's not bad. You you could put a little more revolutionary uh, uh, um, stuff inside, because I this was just for me for right how I how I see Middle East, how how what are the difference, and how I feel here. What is the, the better lifestyle for me here, and so. And what is the name of this book? The book is uh, Jana Haval. The life of Haval, and uh, I wrote it because Haval is here, so the general word for a good friend could be, in first line, a comrade. Yeah, it could be um, a, a YPG friend, a YPG friend, so who also support the movement. So, and maybe if it's possible, you can you have it here. We can uh, hear a little bit of it. Yeah, this is like my times I spent in the, in the Malabarindas, in the, in the hospitals. So three years, three years of my time here. Now maybe I can make a little chapters more because it's one and a half year ago that I made this, but, but it's really not for publishing or so. This is really just for me. Or this would be a good uh, book for, um, I think, um, people who are interested to, to support the revolution who speak German, yeah? Because I really r try to write how I see new here, yeah, really Middle Easter, yeah, sometimes I feel like in a, I don't know, like in a Matt Damon movie or so, if you drive through the cities and there's really nice old stone houses and we are holding Kalashnikovs and we are moving, um, uh, we are watching the, the houses and it's like really little romantical, yeah, if you see this. So, Haval, like uh, here we're sitting in this place surrounded by photos of the martyrs of Yepege and Yepege. Did you know some of these uh, friends? This is both Haval and Haval Rustin Judy. He was a German friend, and this friend, Shade Robin Aguirre, was an American, then I know a really personality. Um, for example, Haval uh, Robin Aguirre, he was with me here as I was new here, so three and a half, four years ago. He was in the Academy for Make Education, a really, really nice guy. Um, a really kind guy, really helpful. So how was his personality? Like, what kind of fever was he? Yeah, I mean, uh, Robin Aguirre, I met him a couple of days, but he was helpful. He was uh, kind, he was a nice guy. I couldn't uh, say something bad about him. He was, and as I heard that he died, I was really a little disappointed. I was really a little bad, uh, sad. I didn't know it before, and then I saw him here, a Shahid, and I was really a little sad. But for Haval Rustem Judy, I've seen him on, on Stark TV, that's he falls, and he was a German guy, a little older, about 50, over 50, but he was a really, in Germany you say, a uh, hard bone, yeah, he was a really, he was a really soldier, he was mercenary in Africa, he was in Latin America, he was uh, in the German army, he was also in the Legion of France, and I thought he probably he's one of the best uh, internationalists uh, international uh, soldier I've seen. He was really strong like a bone. He was a hard uh, guy. And I thought if somebody survived, he would. But then it was in Mimbich. He got, I think, uh, some Daesh with Kalashnikov killed him. And, and how is, like, uh, I don't know, this friends, maybe especially that you knew a bit personally, how is thinking on them affecting how you work? Uh, it's, 
I try to be better that uh, that we live Zen's uh, ideas further. Yeah, that we can go this way further. And if we stop now, if we say oh, we are tired, the revolution don't work, we we stop it now. For what? Yeah. So we we have to end it. We have to finish it. We have to do our best work we can. <laughs> So now, four years came by, you're sitting here in Rojava, Kurdistan, like cleaning your gun. What do you think, if you could like see yourself now, four years ago, what do you think you would think? Yeah, I also wrote in my book, if somebody four or five years ago said to me, you get a gorilla, you get a YPG member, I would laugh about him or her. So 
but I think the point is you never know what's in the future. You know, when you never know what happens. So I I never thought about to get a gorilla or get a YPG member or help in a revolution. But now it is how it is. Yes. Yeah. So I'm here. I'm happy with the situation. I think it was the right decision for me. And but I never would believe it before if somebody would say you get a gorilla, you get a revolutionary. But now I'm it's I think like a lot of people when they come here in part, it's also about of course, it's about like wanting to join the revolution here to see it to help, but it's also that there's like something in their life in Europe or the West that they did not accept, that yeah. they wanted to run away from. What was it for you? Yeah, I've met a lot of uh, friends who had a problem with the law or something else, but uh, the most I think really were not uh, comfortable with the life before. They want to change something. They want to make something sinful. If I thought my work before in Germany, l working for companies for make profit for the companies, and if I look what I do here, yeah, I make physiotherapy for injured friends. I try to make them good. I, I tried to help the society here with this, and uh, there was thousand percent a better decision to make it here. And so what would you say to someone who, like, I don't know, they're sitting in Germany now, they feel a bit unhappy with their job, with the way their life is going? Like, what message would you give to them? I mean, uh, I every time say, um, maybe you, you hate you for the decisions you make, but you absolutely will hate you for the decisions you don't make. So prove yourself, try it. If you're good with this, um, if you want to change something, if you want to make something new, then try it. I mean, it can work it could be the right decision or it don't work. Then you can try to make it uh, back again. But if you don't try it, this would be the absolute wrong decision, I think. So. Absolutely. <laughs>now we're heading out where are we going and um, now we will go to the tabur place where's in general the military education for the international comrades for the new friends and what we do there yeah today is a little ceremony like tribute to our comrades um, who fought in afrin in general for the international uh Chahids, but all all of them uh, should be tribute today and we make like a little ceremony like a little to tribute him the, to, to make a little memorizing, yeah, absolutely. So uh, we're running late, so let's get in the car and go. Okay.
ciao, bella ciao, bella ciao, ciao, ciao. Si io caigo en la guerrilla, te dejaré mi fusil. Cava una fosa en la montaña, oh bella ciao, bella ciao, bella ciao. Where are we standing now? We are staying here at the ceremonial point where we make a memorial for the shades of Afrin in general, for the internationalist shades, martyrs, and we want to respect them here, we want to remember them, because it's one year ago that the Turkish occupied Afrin, and now we are for remembering. So now, like, one year has gone by since the occupation of Afrin. Like, how do you feel? Do you feel like we have the chance to win it back? I think it will need time, but we can win it back. I mean, it's like a guerrilla war. It needs time, yeah. And like, in the frame of this discussion that we're making today, we're remembering the Shahids. How do you? How does that make you feel about your role, your resistance? I hope we will make this way further. We will go this way further, also in the name of the Shahids. And we have to work harder that we respect them all and. So we should go and join the ceremony, but uh, thank you very much for your time today. Sekeftin, and until the next program, goodbye. The new international, Or viewers, today you're watching the new international, and we're here at a ceremony for the international shahids of Afrin. Until the next time, Sekeftin, and goodbye. Descubierto al invaso